and may they sustain us. Lord, bring us clear to mind and touch the hearts of us with a second of your loving grace. For Lord, we pray for the hopes of the world at this time, as each one of our Advent candles is lit. May that light shine in those who are dispossessed. May it shine in the lives of those who are lonely. May it shine in the lives of those who are anxious. May it shine in each one of our lives. For as we come towards the day of your birth, we know that we are made in your image, the image of a vulnerable infant. Lord, as our Advent story continues, may we share that story with our friends and our families at this time, in the kindnesses that we offer, in the charities that we support, in the calling that you give us for the hope and anticipation. May the message of the life and service of Jesus live on in us. Lord, we pray this in the expectation of a Messiah born to be King as we share together the words of the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This year our children's nativity has been a, a filmed nativity, and we're delighted that the children of our Sunday school last Sunday after the service filmed it all for us. Um, so it's we're, we're going to have it all running through. So we're going to have, first of all, it was on a starry night, and then we're going to hear it was the night before Christmas, and the children are going to share in the nativity story. And this year they've been doing puppets, and Neil has found a very special audio. In the middle of it, we'll hear the, the lovely modern carol, Mary Had a Baby, and it's the children of Wishaw Old Sunday School a number of years ago singing that for people in the church. And then at the end of it, May will we'll finish it off with a way in a manger. Yeah, we in a, in a manger, so I do ask you not to sing, just hum, because Neil will have to edit it out if there's anyone singing. So we all know that we want to sing, but unfortunately we're, we're not able. So let's hear now, it was on a starry night as we celebrate our nativity this Sunday.
was the night before Christmas in the little town of Nazareth, where a beautiful young woman and her new husband, a devotee carpenter, had been travelling to the carpenter's family hometown to wait on him. Their journey was long, but the devoted carpenter had a faithful donkey for his beautiful young wife to ride on. The journey took three days and three nights, and by the time they reached the busy town of Bethlehem, the beautiful young woman was so tired that all she wanted to do was sleep. Unfortunately, all of the inns were full, as many people had gathered there for a census. Just when the young couple were wondering what to do next, a kindly innkeeper seeing the young woman was with child said, I don't have any rooms left to rent, but I have a dry stable where my animals live. You are welcome to stay there. Not having any other option, the carpenter took his wife to the stable and made her comfortable in a bed of soft hay. The young woman knew the baby was about to be born right there in that place where the animals stayed. And the carpenter thought to himself that the 
why we would never be the same again because God had come down to earth for a visit. Just 
glance to me, and nobody knows that you have to live with the consequence. We heard Margaret sharing from the message version of Luke chapter 2, and there's our first wow moment of unexpectedness. The shepherds were on, on the hillside. We know they were about their normal business, they were guarding the sheep, they were caring for their flocks, and then, bang, the glory of the Lord was upon them. We all know the story so, so well. What is our reaction to unexpectedness? Now, I'm sure you'll agree with me, this has been one of the most unexpected years of our lives. It's been an unexpected Christmas. It's strange, somehow the slide above me were, were swimming against the tide. Our normal life has been turned upside down. Most people, their work, their school, their existence has been affected. Some people sadly have lost their jobs. Others have, have tragically died this year. Some have got seriously injured and sick, and many have just lived in a state of anxiety and fear. The virus has blazed around us, unseen, unknowing. Any of us here in this church or anyone in the street might be a carrier, and we don't know. The message version tells us that the shepherds were terrified. The older versions tell us they were afraid. As we, as we think back to our own personal experience at the beginning of lockdown in February and in March, as we saw the pictures on television coming in from Italy and Spain and, and other parts of Europe, and then it hit us. There was a worry. There was an anxiety. There was a sense of the world is not right. We're contrary. Some were afraid. And yet I'm sure that many preachers like me try to look at the story and look for a positive angle. The renewed community spirit. Were you in a, a WhatsApp group? We all of a sudden discovered we had 13 neighbours. And we, as you know, we live, we're the only house on a hill. There was many, many acts of kindness, both here in Wishaw and throughout Scotland. We came to, to value those in the, in the NHS, and every Thursday we'd go outside our doors and, and bang pots and pans and, and clap. No substitute, but a, an element of solidarity. And then we found new ways of doing things. Our church is, is on the internet in a large way, and as many others are. So in the Gospel story, what was the positiveness of this fear, this terrifiedness or afraidness? And we know it was the good news, the glad tidings, the joyful event that the angels brought. That positive angle, and it tells us in the Bible, to all, to everyone in the world. Our second wow moment. And yet, what was that wow moment? An unexpected saviour. Born in the, the unlikely town of Davidstown. Not born in a, in a palace. A saviour who in the message version it says was Messiah and Master. In the older versions, who was Christ the Lord. And yet this major, major event for the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, they had been waiting for a Messiah to happen. And what form did the Messiah take? Well, our children lovingly shared for us that story in puppet form. And here's a, a very classic, classical picture. That baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And yet, what is a manger? It's an animal feeding trough. That's where the Messiah was born. That is surely a wow moment. 
the unexpectedness of God's message for each and every one of us. And we invite at Christmas time people to, to ponder what does that mean for us as individuals? Do we, do we recognise that calling of God of the unexpectedness? But we shouldn't kid ourselves in, in the world. Unexpectedness can often lead to, to bad weather, testing times, unhappiness. The unexpectedness of God can lead to the closing of one door and the opening of another. The unexpectedness of God can lead to change and transformation. And sometimes we want that change because it's exciting and it's new and it's novel. And other times we struggle to understand why does it have to change. The unexpectedness of God can be demanding. And so the story of the shepherds continues. And we have the next wow moment, the heavenly host. But I want to suggest to you that actually the message version, and that was one of the reasons I chose it, is because it used the word Messiah. But also it, it said in verse 15, it says in verse 15 that the shepherds talked it over. The older versions don't use that expression, they just say, and they agreed and they went. And that's why I think that's the fourth wow moment of talking it over. It suggests that some of the shepherds were confused. Some of them didn't maybe trust their, their own eyes in seeing the angels. They were naturally reluctant. Others said, let's go and see for ourselves, for we need proof, seeing is believing. Others were excited and were told in the message version, they started running. And I found this wonderful picture, you know, over the last month, we've been looking at some of the visual images of the Messiahship, and, and this is a, a picture from a, a website called Soul Painter, soulpainter.com, and they allow us to use it if we give them a, a little link and a, a plug. It's a, it's a wonderful example of the artistic impression and artistic interpretation. So that's the fourth wow moment, when a group of ordinary people just like us, a group of shepherds on the hillside, discussed debated and realised that their fears and hesitations were there, but they decided to go forth. Our last wow moment of the unexpectedness is the fact that they told the rest of us. They told the rest of us of this unexpected event which took place in an unexpected place, that took place in an unexpected way and were told in the story, and all were <coughs> impressed. They told all of the story. And so we move back to a more traditional picture. That here, what is our reflection today of the nature of the Messiah on the fourth Sunday of Advent? A Messiah came as a vulnerable baby. A Saviour came in a stable. A saviour who was Messiah and Master and Christ the Lord. How unexpected. God will call each and every one of us, maybe this year, maybe one year, in unexpected ways, in tests and in joyful occasions. Unexpected. Our challenge today is to go forth from this service, to go forth from this, this word from, from Luke's Gospel. And, in, and to decide when the unexpected hits us, what is our response to the good news as Christians? Amen. May God bless to us his holy word and this unexpected story. We're now going to hear now a reflection on O Holy Night.
Hawthorne for, for playing us that lovely rendition of Holy Night. Our, our children are now going to, to rejoin us for the Christmas album. Well, as you can see, Santa arrived, arrived early and, 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 and brought me a, a very, very big gift. And I've not used this in a few years. So, uh, I wonder if we can read what it says, Matthew. The big wee book. That's right. This is my big wee book, which I've used in schools and Sunday school for many, many years. Have you got a big wee book? No, have, have, you, got, have you got a big wee book? Apologies for that. Oh! And I looked up my big wee book. Just to prove that Santa gave it to me. Here you go. Have you ever seen a Christmas card as big as that? My big wee book's quite special. So anyway, today we're going to do the Christmas alphabet. So I think what I'll do is I'll take my pages, because I'll be a bit hard doing it out in the big wee book. And normally when I do this, I would do it with a school assembly or with children in church, and you're allowed to shout out but you're not allowed to shout out anymore. So you've just got to think into your head as I do the Christmas alphabet and see how many you get right in. But again, I'm not allowed to ask you these questions. There's 26 letters of the alphabet. So we'll maybe have a wee competition and you can see if you can get the answers to all 26. Bet you don't get Q. Bet you don't get Z. Bet you don't get O, bet you don't get P, bet you don't get X especially. Where did I put the answers? <laughs> I think I can remember them. If I can't remember them, I'll make it up. So let's go through it. A is for angel. The angel that we just heard about there in Luke 2. B is for these are the easy ones. Bethlehem. Just say them under your breath now. You'll not get C. C is for census. Yes, Mary and Joseph went all the way on that donkey for the census. I hope you have nice ones this Christmas. Because Mary and Joseph had many different D is for dream. E is for one of the lesser known characters of the Christmas story. E is for Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. I goodness, I remember that when Jane's here. I think she'd be terrible if I didn't remember that. <laughs> F, well, we heard about that again in Luke chapter 2. F is for field. The fields of the shepherds were guarding their flocks by night. The message version didn't say that, did it? It missed that bit out. F is for field. I hope you're counting how many you've got right here. G is for 2G. So it's 2G's. Glory to God. Glory to God, which the angels sang to the shepherds in the field. And H is for Buhis King Herod. Remember the wise men went to visit King Herod to ask him. It's a good job I remember this story, isn't it? <laughs> I hope you're remembering it too. H I. 
There was no room here, was there? Aye, as for the inn, when Mary and Joseph arrived that night. And the innkeeper says, no room, no room. You might have thought J was for Jesus, but it's not. J is for Joseph the carpenter. Oh, well done if you got that one. K and L is for the baby born to be king who is Lord of all. Well, that's two points to me, certainly. Yes, that's right. K is for the king. Jesus was born as a king. And L is for Jesus who is Lord of all. M is for a very straightforward one. And there's some lovely ones here in the congregation. M is for Mary, Jesus' mother. Now we had B is for Bethlehem, and N is for Nazareth. I'll hold this one up to see O and P. What did the wise men bring? They brought offerings for the king. Gold and frankincense and myrrh to fulfill the promises of Jesus. Well, that's definitely two points to me. You wouldn't have got that one, would you? O and P. Now here's the real test of your biblical knowledge. Q is for oh, I wish I could I could allow you to shout out, because I'm sure that somebody here knows. Curinius. Aye, he was the Roman governor, wasn't he? Q is for Curinius. Fulfill the promises 
of the predictions of the Old Testament prophets. And Z, well, you know Z, don't you? There'll be a few people here who know Z. Zachariah, yes. Zachariah and Elizabeth. And Zachariah was struck dumb when he discovered that his wife was pregnant. That happens to many of us men <laughs> in the story. So there is the ABC of Christmas time. We're now going to share in our prayers of thanksgiving. Let us come before God in our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Holy God, we praise you for the magnificence of this world the complexities of your evolving universe and the beauty we find in the far-flung stars and the wonder in the tiniest creatures. In this period of Advent, we long to greet you in the simplicity of the stable on Christmas morning and set aside the trappings of a commercialised Christmas. We worship you along with the wise men and the shepherds and we await the same message from the angels of peace on earth and goodwill towards all men. We give thanks for the current day messengers and ministers finding novel and imaginative ways to deliver that timeless message to a broken world. We give thanks too for those who still hear that message and discern in it that still voice of calm calling them to holy ministry. Grant them your blessing as they serve the church and walk with their flock. God of mercy, whose steadfast love and faithfulness have accompanied your people down the generations, we bring before you those in need at this time. Bless our Queen, our governments in Hollywood and Westminster. Grant wisdom and discernment to their leaders in the complex challenges they face balancing the demands of economics and health, both physical and mental. May your spirit overshadow our health professionals, nurses, doctors, surgeons, chaplains, and all who serve in our hospitals, care homes, and hospices, and in the community. I support the inquisitive and analytical minds of clinicians, technicians, and scientists and the ongoing search for drugs and therapies to ease the illness of this virus and to develop the necessary vaccinations to give protection to us all and to allow us to live free from restrictions. In our meditations we are mindful of children without mothers, of people across the world who each day live without money, adequate education, drinking water, nourishing food or the insurance of personal safety. Be present, dear Lord, with those who are ill. Hold the hand of those who are bereaved and soothe those who are anxious, alone or fearful. And particularly today we offer our prayers to a young girl, a seven-year-old girl recovering from brain surgery. Her name is Katie. Hold her and her parents in your healing arms and let her look forward to a swift and full recovery. And finally, accompany us on our journey towards Christmas morn. Sustain us through the sublime solace of nature, friendship, <coughs> scripture and service of others. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, our Master and Saviour. Amen. And now our offerings shall be received.
our life and faith in Jesus. Let us love thee and our neighbor, and by hearing thy word, grow in faith as we offer ourselves unto thee. Lord, accept these gifts, these Advent time, for the hope and expectation that all may hear of the message of the Messiah, born to be king, who is the life for all. Amen. Good morning, friends, and welcome to your service, and a special welcome to anyone sharing in our worship, and in particular, any visitors sharing this holiday with us over the internet or through the dial sermon phone line. For those that are present, can I seek your forbearance? Well, there's quite a, a lengthy list of notices and announcements this morning. In fact, it's growing arms and legs since half past ten this morning. But firstly, a big thank you to the Sunday school children and the leaders for a very upbeat and or original puppet nativity, and also to Keith and Neil and Alison for the artistic and musical interpretation of that age-old story. Please remember, we'll share our traditional carol service at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. I have to interrupt you there, because you said this last week, we're not singing any carols on Christmas Eve, <laughs> we're having a Christmas service, but we'll have a bit of new Christmas music. <laughs> no, I, I know, I, I mean, I, he said it last week, and I meant to say something to him, so there's no carols, there's no singing. It's a Christmas service. My apologies. Continue, sir. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sure it's the rest of the No, he didn't even mention anything at the rehearsal. <laughs> uh, however, the, back to reality, the announcement by the First Minister yesterday has not only put paid to many of your plans, I'm sure, for a five-day relief period next week, it also affects our church services. We're back to a restriction again in numbers of 20, and then latterly with the move to level four restrictions on Boxing Day for three weeks, we have decided, again reluctantly, to suspend live worship until the 17th of January. We do hope and pray that these restrictions that will affect everybody, not just the church, will lead to a, a, a reduction in the spread of the virus. Obviously, any changes to these plans will be circulated on our Facebook page uh, and also through the elders' contacts. Online worship, however, will continue to be available each Sunday at 11 a.m. Right, from this, uh, uh, since joining us in April last year, uh, Keith has brought a uh, freshness to our worship. His imaginative and interesting children's addresses have brought to life Plot the Owl and the River of Life. Through his Bible-based sermons week by week, we have travelled the Easter journey the Advent journey, we've explored faith, commitment and joy. And all of this has brought to life with his imaginative and tasteful use of visual aids to supplement the message. He's brought these skills and he's also encouraged others to use any skill that we have as we'll be explored, explored new ways of working to bring the church to a wider audience. He's encouraged the development of lay partition patient and worship, and also at the same time has been a, master, a minister and pastor to our church and community. For all these gifts, his dedication, diligence, and most of all his friendship, wish you all will forever be in your debt. So as a token of this, can I ask you to accept this small gift on behalf of the congregation that comes with our best wishes for your future ministry journey. Whatever that leads you. Uh, from the 1st of January, we have the pleasure of welcoming Jade Leitner as our new locum. Jade is a graduate minister, a ministry candidate, and has recently completed her final training. Uh, a native of Bells Hill, but will not hold that against you, Jade. Uh, she has served in North Motherwell, Bothwell, and more recently, Pew Park. Although she takes up her duties on the 1st of January, together with Eric and young Fred, the both are here uh, this morning, please offer Jade your friendship, your prayers, as she sets out on this stage of her ministry journey. And uh, as I do at Presbytery, Jade, if you want to stand up and identify. <laughs> Yes. 
front, it's a delight to see Gina and John part both back with us today after their uh, full recovery. However, I have to tell you of the illness of one of our members, Margaret Wilson, who's recovering after a fall at home. Can I also send our best wishes for a Merry Christmas and health and happiness to all our regular internet viewers and in particular to Hazel and Jill Muir. This weekend sees the 50th anniversary of Hazley's induction to wish it all. So Hazel, Jill and all the family, best wishes from everyone here. However, on a note of sadness, I must tell you the death of Jack Pratt. Jack moved away from the area some years ago to be nearer his family and passed away peacefully last weekend, aged 98. We offer our sympathy and prayers to his family, his friends, and indeed everyone who mourns at this time. And now for the usual health care warning. When the service closes, could I ask that you leave the sanctuary starting at the rear of the church and working forward. Any used face masks can be deposited in the waste bins provided, and please use the hand sanitizer. Please remember to maintain that two metre distance as you share a conversation outside the church. And as you always remember, stay safe, stay calm, stay praying, and God bless you all. So thank you so much for your kind gift. I haven't opened the, the, the envelope yet, but I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be lovely. Um, I have valued greatly visiting the homes and meeting the people and having the chats and, and coming to the lunches fairly often. And most of all, I, I just have enjoyed worshipping and sharing with a, a lovely, lovely congregation. Uh, it really has, has, has been a delight uh, and, and a privilege. And, and I will always remember this. They say, go to Cope Bridge and die. Is that what they say? And I say, come to sunny Wishaw and just enjoy the people and enjoy being here. And I'm still remaining as your, your interim moderator. And if Jade needs a, a, a Sunday off, I was hoping that she would come up and join me uh, so that you could see that I'm leaving you with a much better off, a uh, much better looking, <laughs> no, no better off, because I'm probably better off now, a much better looking local than uh, I am. And I'm sure the camera doesn't lie. My special thanks must go to Tom, that's why uh, I wanted to have the uh, last word. Uh, as you know, our, our session clerk is a lad in many parts, um, and, and it has been uh, a great fun having our, our, uh, our teas and coffees and, uh, as, you, as you'll have gathered, happy banter and repartee. Isn't that a nice way of putting it? It's a, it's a, a, a lovely way. In uh, all seriousness, Tom has been a, a great support to me, a, a, great, a great help, and, and it's, 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 it's been wonderful uh, having a relationship. And we will continue that relationship with ourselves, with all of you. I'll, I shall return. In the words of Fu Manchu, the world has not seen me again, or whatever it was. A special thank you to our children who have been here for throughout my, my time. I've really loved working with you especially and having your, your little input to all the things. I won't, I won't name you, oh, you know who you are, and it's, it's, been, it's been great fun um, having it. So a special word to you, and thank you for being here throughout the whole service, even those was really dull adult bits, but that was really good. So we're going to close now, and May, one last special thank you to May for, for all that, that, that she has done, and she's going to play us out with O Come, All You Faithful, and remember Doris, no singing. <laughs>
Thank you.